So some seasons, God has you focus on your faith in him. In other seasons, God has you focus on his faith in you. And the reason why God would have you lean on your faith in him is to build character, build character. And oftentimes it's through hard scenarios, but the hard scenario is always there to, again, build your character. And then also in seasons where God has you focus on your faith in him or his faith in you is because God is repairing the broken places. God is repairing broken places inside of you. What I've been learning is our soul, when God breathed into our flesh with his life and our spirit met with our body, we became a living soul. We had a free will, a mind, emotions, intellect, creativity. And then that soul is designed to endure eternity in the condition of our soul. But the world is broken. The world is broken and people may have treated us horrible, have not lifted us up, have not walked in the fullness of integrity, but even those things are far from God's intentions for us. And so even then God and his bigness and amazingness and creativity and love and desire for us is always looking to refine us and purify us and make us better and better our character and heal those breached, broken areas in our heart. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody comes in, I will dine with him and he with me, right? Like a friend, the Holy Spirit is always looking to refine us and build us and heal us and make us better. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will not leave you orphans. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus, that you have not left us in the dark brokenness of our life. Thank you that you have not left us and abandoned us. Thank you. Your word says that he that began a good work in you is faithful to complete it until his return. He that began a good work in you is faithful to complete it until his return. Some seasons, the Lord has you focus on your faith in him, standing on what he promised you standing on what he told you, standing on what you know to be true in scripture. He may be silent, but he has not forsaken you. He may be silent, but he has not abandoned you. Other seasons, the father will have you focus on his faith in you, your identity in him, the rights you have as a believer in the kingdom. I just wanted to remind you that I love you. And even with that said, even with that said, our soul, our soul, the more we work and let the Holy Spirit heal us in our soul and our heal us in our soul and condition and repurpose our soul, our character, our ability to fall into sin, our ability to inspire one another, our ability to to receive from the Father, right? A living soul. No one and nothing, no nothing else, not the universe, not animals, no other living creature, not the sun not the moon, not computers, not a clone has a living soul. Jesus said those that are born of water and the spirit or those that are born of flesh, water and anyways, living soul. The thing is when we have these breaches in our life and there's a brokenness in our life and maybe someone did something so horrible or someone um, did some type of atrocity or we battled through some type of depression or addiction, right? One Jesus said, I will leave the 99 to go find the one sheep. He said, I did not come for those that are healthy, but those that need a physician. That is who he called to. And throughout scripture, you constantly find Jesus reminding people of why he came, right? So know that you are very important. But the he said, I have come to give them life and life more abundantly. I am the bread of life. Man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out the mouth of the Father. So when our soul is in this broken condition and there's holes and things that have happened to us and things that we've suffered and, and maybe maybe I've been in prison and maybe I've been in jail, maybe I've been an addict, maybe I've been homeless, maybe I've been molested, maybe I've been raped, maybe I've been robbed, maybe I've been a sex slave, maybe I've been, um, you name it, you name it, fill in the blank, whatever it is, fill in the blank, fill it in the blank, fill it with as many things that has happened to you. When Jesus has come to give you life and life more abundantly, 
I learned this too, and I, I'm gonna finish my point, but I learned this. Someone said, what is the difference between, uh, what is the difference between everlasting life and eternal life? Jesus said, behold, I have come to give them life and life more abundantly. But scripture says, I will give you eternal life. And then also in like revelation, it's like everlasting life. The difference between everlasting life and eternal life is everlasting life begins and never ends. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life, life that will last forever. But when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, we have eternal life. What is eternal life? What's the difference? Because the Bible makes a distinction. Eternal life is life that has no beginning and no end. The only one throughout history, the only one in the Bible, the only one that we can, science can try to look to that has, n has a life that has never began and never end is the Alpha, the Omega, Yahweh Almighty. When the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of you, he gives you his life, his life, his life. Jesus came and sacrificed his life. When the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you have a life, his life, no beginning, no end. Jesus said, where you are, there, where I am, there you shall be also. Where I am, there you shall be also. That is the Father's desire. Not, hey, come hang out with me and then go home when it's when it's convenient, you know. Uh, come hang out with me and go home when, when Game of Thrones comes on or whatever it may be. No, no, no. He's like, I want you with me forever. I want you with me, yoked to me passionately. I just want you to know some seasons the Father has you focus on your faith in Him. And that may be every season, but some season the Father has you focus on His faith in you. The last point I wanted to make is when we have these breaches in our heart and the enemy can kind of just pull this chain and re-react. Someone could just say something and we react. If we have flashbacks, we wake up, we have nightmares, we have night terrors, we have cold sweats, we, whatever we go through, like the enemy can, or you, you spaz out on someone at work, or you know, you feel crazy, you feel like you're not all together, and the Holy Spirit comes in to lead you through the healing process. But as long as we have these holes and these big, huge gaps and wounds, that is hard to revisit, it is hard to visit. It's hard to talk about. It's hard to talk about some of the dreams you've had. It's hard to talk about some of the things people have done to you. Things that, and, and not only that, our brain is so powerful. It will black out. It will disassociate from reality to preserve your soul. Your soul, which will stand before God and go through all eternity. Your soul, like a book, like a journal. Your mind will block things out. I was reading this book, my favorite book ever, other than the Bible, my favorite book ever. Brother Yoon, Heavenly Man. Brother Yoon, Heavenly Man. It's about a, a Chinese man from the underground church in China, and he was persecuted. He grew up in a very, uh, like, rural, rural area. Like, he was a farmer, poor, grew up dirt poor, gave his life to God. He prayed and asked for a Bible. All the Christians in China had been martyred or went underground or fled. And so virtually there was no Christianity in China. And he prayed for a Bible and uh, two men, a man at night showed up to his house and he had a dream the night before that someone was bringing him loaves of bread. He woke up, there was a knock at the door and he said, hey, are you here to bring me the bread? And a man said, yes. And he handed this man a Bible wrapped in, I guess what they wrap bread in. And moving forward about disassociation, Brother Yoon suffered major persecution, major persecution, but never relented, never bowed. And one of the times that he was being, one of the times that he was being beaten, he passed out, his body blacked it out. There's other times, yeah, his body blacked it out. He couldn't remember. And it reminds me of like how powerful our brain is. To, in order to preserve us and keep us from reality or keep us from some of the trauma that's happening to us, the, the, our bodies will black it out. And the Holy Spirit is able to walk us through the healing of it and the trauma of it. So we're not just out of this world. We're not just phased out of this world and, and not engaging. Anyways, that's my point. As long as we have these gaps in our heart, the enemy has a much greater target 
to affect us and traumatize us and, and torment us. But if we walk through the healing process, the enemy's target is shrinking in your life every day. If there's something that you can't talk about, if there's something you can't speak about, if there's something you cannot bring up, I pray, bring it to the Father and trust him to walk you through it. He said, I have come to give them life and life more abundantly. A lot of times what we deem as normal is actually unconditioned for us. It's not conditioned for us or to thrive. A lot of times when we hold on to what we believe is normal because it is safe, it's actually some of the things that are killing us or lives in the condition of the things that have killed us or are tormenting us. So I pray, Father, whatever is in our life that we are afraid to bring before you, whatever is in our life that, is, that we may feel guilty about, Whatever is in our life that is holding us back, we pray that your 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 faith in us, your purpose challenges that. Some seasons, the Holy Spirit, some seasons the Father may have you focus on your faith in Him and that foundation. And other seasons, the Father may have you focus on His faith in you, who you are, your identity, your purpose. I want you to know when God speaks a word to you, it, your, when God speaks a word to you, your purpose, it will challenge all other areas in your life. There's almost never a time when the Holy Spirit gives you a promise that it doesn't go, that you don't go, oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do that. There's almost never a time. At no point in the Bible did God ask somebody, God has commanded people to do what was in their power. But God has asked someone and challenged someone to do something that was too great for them and they needed his power they needed his power they needed his life remember i was talking about eternal life when he gives you his life life without a beginning and life without an end and but then everlasting life a life that begins when you trust the father and it never ends i love you friends